Hello again. Although I'm not personally opposed to sex changes and transsexualism, nor am I an enthusiastic advocate of the business. I don't mind what grown men and women get up to, but throughout almost the whole of recorded history, men who think that they are women and wear women's clothes have been viewed a bit askance. The Bible, of course, is strongly against the practice, and both Old Testament and New emphasise that the Lord created males and females as separate things. That's why, even in these liberated times, when a makeup company like Maybelline employs a bearded man as a model for their latest lipstick, it causes raised eyebrows. In the description to this video, I give a link to a little bit about this, and the thumbnail shows the man from the Maybelline advertisement, and pretty strange he looks too. Mind, other companies have already been using men to advertise bras, skirts and swimming costumes, so I can't see why there should be an uproar over a lipstick. Throughout history, this kind of thing has always been viewed as a sign of decadence, and it's only in the last few years that it has been tolerated, and indeed celebrated now, in the Western world. Examples of transsexualism from history have often been cited as showing the degeneracy of some civilization or other, as happened with the case in ancient Rome. It is sometimes claimed that the first sex change operation was carried out in Europe in the early 20th century, but this is quite untrue. The Emperor Nero, whose behaviour was a byword for corruption and decadence, ruled in the latter part of the first century AD. He allegedly had sex with his own mother, raped a vestal virgin and kicked his wife to death. He was uh, something of a byword for the decline of inequality of Roman emperors. Nero then fell in love with a young male slave and arranged to have him castrated in an attempt to turn him physically into a woman. He then went through a marriage ceremony with the slave who was called Sporus. Everybody treated Sporus as a woman, and after Nero's death he married another important man. The story of Nero and Sporus has always been used as an illustration of how Roman civilization was on the decline by that time. Because to generations of historians, the idea of surgically transforming a man into a woman was regarded as disgusting and unnatural. It's only recently that we've begun to view this kind of mutilation as being a praiseworthy and natural thing to engage in. It may well be that we are more enlightened than past cultures, but it may equally be the case that we are as decadent and degenerate as the Rome which Nero ruled, and that is why we no longer see anything shocking in the story of Sporus being surgically transformed into a substitute female. I'd give a link to the Wikipedia page about Sporus in the description to this video.